it's still barely a movie. Airhead and the Goomba War Time. By the way, there is a version of this that came with a doll! I was some sad I didn't get the doll version of this. <laughs> Don't worry, my dear! I, Lumiere, will say the art dead again. I'm not going to scream. Well, I should hope not, dearie. Ah, it's human Mrs. Potts, in look and character pretty much, as she takes the place of, well, the rest of the side characters at the castle, though she'll mostly be useless. Oh, oh, I've just got to fix these doors someday. And she can't tell the difference between windows and doors. My goodness, that's amazing. That's for you, then, dearie. I'm too busy for this. Now let me leave via the door. The voice actor for this character and a couple others, Susan Silo, is actually the only one with a credit on IMDb. Another site lists a couple other actors, including Duran Norris, not Darren Norris, but this gets a little confusing as the cover shown is actually for the other Golden Films Beauty and the Beast. So I don't know what's accurate for this or the other film. I do at least know that Susan Silo's credit for this one is correct, as I recognize her voice for Clara from another production. An actual Disney one, even. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> you're more fun than a barrel of sea monkeys. <laughs> of course I'm the one. The name's Clara. I'm the cook. I'm also the housekeeper, the gardener, and in a pinch. I can do a bit of magic. Oh, well, it sure was nice of you to use your magic to stop the beast from threatening to kill my father and I. You're such a wonderful person, Clara. Now, honey, let's feed you. But, but where's the beast? Oh, don't worry, sweetheart. He's already eaten. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I thought he was going to... Kill you? <gasps> I frightened you, didn't I? I'm really scary, right, right? You're scared, right? I hope a fly doesn't get in my mouth. We shall speak tomorrow. But I thought you meant to kill me. Come on, hurry up with that, right? I cannot bring myself to do it. Consider this to be your castle. See, I'm a great guy. I decide to not kill you because you give me a big hairy warthog mushroom boner. Thank you for sparing my life. Whoa, this isn't the Beauty and the Beast porno, woman. Perhaps someday you will be my wife. Yeah, why develop towards that? She's probably almost there anyway, after all the not killing of her father and holding her hostage. She must have quite the response to such an asinine statement. Well said. <gasps> Oh, kind beast. Yeah, he gave you a room with a bunch of dresses made for a giant. Who the hell even cares about that whole freedom thing anymore? So, believe it or not, she's pretty much content immediately, so we have to get some friction elsewhere. Hello, beauty. I am the fairy of the castle. And you've come to tell me Beast is really kind and gentle, no matter what he looks like on the outside? No, I come to warn you not to be fooled by him. Here's a few things I love about this scene. Beauty's no shits given attitude to a fairy popping in. Her insistence the pig mushroom that'll kill at the pluck of a rose must be a great guy. And the fairies, nah, you're an idiot. He's a dick. Beware of the beast, Beauty. And now for a grand exit. For some reason, despite just teleporting in. It can't be. 
He couldn't. Wow, don't kill a girl and give her a few oversized dresses and you must be Prince fucking Charming. Hey, Clara, what was it that got me and my father in this situation? Oh, well. Of course it doesn't matter if you pick the roses in the greenhouse. Only the roses growing in the horse ship by the stables are penalty of death important. Oh, Clara, the greenhouse is so wonderful. Yeah, sure, sure it is. Just imagine, it's winter outside, yet we have all these beautiful flowers in here. Uh-huh, yeah, it's just great. Wow, we've gotten to the point where even the characters are disinterested in the plot. One night a fairy came to me, but she told me Beast has a cold heart. What do you think of Beast? Honey, I make it a point never to talk about my boss. <laughs> oh, Clara, you are exceedingly useless, aren't you? Ho oh, ho! The return of Lumiere! Oh, screw it, I know this is just gonna end badly, I quit! Awkward! Why do you never eat with me? You eat as a human does. I am a beast, and I must eat as a beast does. Uh. Oh no, my brother, Long John. Was that really his name? Um, like 50% sure. Will you come out onto the balcony with me? Who's balcony? So we get a repeat of the opening scene, sans the spoiler music, now that it's no longer spoilers, though apparently these two crazy shitters still hear it. You dance so well. Even a beast can love music. Who's playing music? Is Clara a one-man band? Whoa, 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 this a beauty in the ass wipe or something. Tail is old as- oh shit, that's the other one. Ah, oh, who gives a fuck? Gonna go piss on those flowers. This has been a glorious night, Beast. How can I thank you? By being my wife, won't you marry me, Beauty? How foolish of me to think you might accept. Dear Beast, I will always be your friend. Oh no! I'm in the friend zone! And yet there is nothing I would refuse you. Then let me visit my father. Whoa, whoa, when I said anything, I didn't mean anything. You do not know what you ask. If you leave me, then I shall die of loneliness. Die of loneliness? What a fucking wiener beast, right? Right? I'm alone here. The loneliness! <laughs> beast, can you take the trash out today? I'm afraid not, for on the journey to the end of the driveway, I'll Die of loneliness. If you can't be bothered, just say so. Just give me one week to visit my family. My heart could not bear to be apart from you longer. I would surely die if it was but a day more than the week you asked for. Wow, Mr. I'm a hairy pussy has us down to an exact science, cause he's gonna watch his loneliness meter. But the beast allows her her week-long trip, and she goes to bed ever so excited to see that wonderful family of the brothers who blend into the background, the two bitches that insisted she go die, and the dick who left her there to die. <laughs> I'm going home. I'm going home at last. Is she dreaming this or is this actually happening? I don't know. This scene makes no sense. I'm out of here. This is a golden opportunity for you, Beauty. Once you are away from the castle, the beast cannot make you return. Also, they seem to have misplaced my glow effect a little bit. Uh, could you help me with that? But he seems so sweet. He told me. He told you he was sweet? I guess you can't argue with that. 
The fairy even tells her the beast has had several women to the castle before killing them after they start draining his loneliness meter, and even gives an impressive light show as proof. <gasps> I'm not gonna let some silly dream scare me. Wow! Would have been better off warning a plank of wood. Would have gotten a bigger response. Yeah, we all know that the beast isn't really gonna be evil, but this doesn't even raise the tiniest bit of suspicion with her. And since since not, we accomplished absolutely nothing with this scene other than Beauty's amazing ability to barely be a human being. <gasps> so, really, Beast? You're sure she keeps you from dying from loneliness? I'm home! Somehow! Yeah, her family has moved since the farm, and she only dreamt she was on the trip, apparently, so she just appeared out of fat air. Sure, the Beast gave her a return teleport ring, but all he said was it'd make her return to the castle, not just appear in another bed the next day. And whose bed was she in? <laughs> Beauty! That was her name, right? It took me a bit to think of it there, apparently. And then Beauty is so drugged she just blankly stares at the wall while her father tries in vain to get her to actually look at him. Truly a wondrous reunion. Somehow, in my heart, I knew you were still alive, my Beauty. You think she bought that? That gets me off the hook, right? Beauty, uh, uh, now that you're back for good, uh, we can all enjoy the treasure the Beast gave Father. But Robert, I promised Beast I could only stay for one week. If I stay any longer, he will die. Then let him die. No, Nathan, Beast is my friend. Then let him die. He treats me tenderly, with affection, and at his castle nothing is denied me. Then let him die. I have riches beyond measure, beautiful gowns and perfumes, and the friendship of one who cares for me. Then let him die. Holy shit, this family is creepy with the blank smiles. At least the evil sisters let you know where they stand and act like normal, miserable human beings. Rather than, I wish I were Gaston, smiling while saying, let him die. I'm sad to see you go. I feel sure Beast will let me come visit you again sometime. Despite the way he looked when I saw him, I am content that you are with him. I'm sure he's a great guy once you get past the I'll murder you or your family for picking a flower thing. But before she can go, the evil stepless sister's new devious plan is to make Beauty stay longer and... Let him die. Which they'll do by... Asking if she'll stay longer. Well... I suppose I could stay one more day. Yeah, it's not a matter of life and death or anything. I would surely die if it was but a day more than the week you asked for. I suppose I could stay one more day. <gasps> Glad she'll just assume it's all good, too, when she has a freaking teleport back to the castle ring on her finger. Couldn't just pop back to the castle and see if Wiener Boy's collapsing from lack of dance or not. And why did these two idiots want Beauty around? They didn't like her because they thought she'd steal all their men, so she's out of your way locked up in a castle with Ganon's loser cousin. Isn't that a win? Oh, well, at least Beauty's changed into her golden dress. Glad that's not like something from the other one or anything. <laughs> doing here? Clara, what are you doing here? I do. Trying to save Beast's life as if you cared. Don't know if you care that much either, Clara, considering you probably could have stopped by and said, hey, what's up, so he wouldn't die of the loneliness plague. Or is talking to you worse than no one at all? Also, if Clara could pop back at any time, maybe pop back and get beauty before the idiot is on the ground dying of a loneliness attack. Wow, I thought he was just being overly dramatic. This is just stupid. You're alive, Beast. But dying. But I die happily. At least I knew you for a short time. I would marry you, Beast. I dreamt I heard the words. 
I have waited so long to hear. Oh, well, that was kind of a if you had died thing. You, you don't usually expect someone to recover from death. Even one so incredibly lame as extreme loneliness. But where's my beast? Right in front of you. All right, cut, guys. Someone jumped ahead on the script. I am he. Many years ago, a spell was played. Ew, I wanted to marry a beast. A spell was placed on me by an evil fairy, and I was imprisoned in a beast's body. Wow, that is the lamest version of this story ever. There wasn't even a lesson in this for the beast. He didn't grow as a character, it's just an evil fairy did it. Speaking of, she was Clara's sister, who she's decided to stop now off screen, despite knowing she was around over a year ago. Maybe Clara just woke up today and remembered, oh yeah, I'm a more powerful witch than her. I can stop her. I forgot. Your spell's been broken and now you're powerless. Because the spell was broke, she's powerless? Jeez, I sure hope the years of a dude being a beast in a castle were worth it to her. Beauty, to show my gratitude to you for breaking my sister's evil spell. You and your prince will rule this land forever. Wow, you can just force everyone under their rule? That sure sounds remarkably evil. Good job. Yeah, I have the power to make you two rule forever, but I have a problem with wind, I mean doors, changing sheets, and watering flowers. There is a price to this, though. Prince Butchin will become a new beast with mismatching eyebrows. Ah! The end. I'm not taking it back. And that's the story of how I sold beauty again to another beast for even more money. This is a really rushed and pretty bad telling of the Beauty and the Beast story. Beauty is an absolute plank. She is very expressionless and Dolly floats around from scene to scene. Belle had a character and would stand up to the Beast in the Disney version, but the biggest fuss Beauty put up here is when the Beast didn't promptly kill her. Her father was an ass who left her to die, and for some reason almost half of this film was focused focused around him. This left very little time for any development of that whole, you know, Beauty and the Beast story, of which there is basically none. There was no change in his character, so he is still the ass who is gonna kill over a rose and then almost fell over dead over having to wait an extra day for someone to come home. That's both impressively weak and stupid. What, did leaving the castle not occur to you? He's not stuck there in this version as he threatened to seek out old man if he didn't come back and sell out his daughter. What an ugly man in an ugly movie. That's right, it was the beast that killed the beauty. And that line really isn't poetic at all when you reverse it now that I think about it. Worst King Kong review ever! <laughs> Check out my Patreon for early mid-roll free episodes, meaning no ads will play in the middle, and other perks. All I wanted was a good time, and instead all I get was Lion and the King! Wait, what?!